Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the beautiful Blue House today with Channel 23. Our show is called The Faces of Carlsbad and uh, we're sponsored by Intrepid Potash. And we always tell the people who are watching us, these people that we interview, you might know them, you might not know them. But when we're through with our interview, we hope that you will say, I know this person. Anyway, today we're very pleased to have a, a very close friend of mine I've known for many years, Tony Renteria. Tony, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Bob. It's a, it's a pleasure it's to a, have you it's here. It's a pleasure being here. And before we get started, Tony, we we're going to talk a little bit about your background, where you, were, where you were born, a little about your family, your mom, your dad. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm actually from the uh, Mesilla Valley, south of Las Cruces, 10 miles south of Las Cruces, at uh, what used to be the largest pecan farm in the world, Stomo Farms. Oh. It's still big, but it's still there, and it's still pretty, but uh, we've been here for almost 30 years, as a matter of fact, I've been 30 years already. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I was actually born in Mexico, and uh, in the uh, city of Lerdo, Durango, but... Uh, Where's that close to? It's, uh, well, it's actually maybe another five, six hours south of Chihuahua City. Oh, I see. So it's in the state of Durango, very close to the big city of Torreon, which is Torreon, Coahuila. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tri uh, city, uh, and the states are right there, close to each other. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it, the whole thing is a city now. It's a yeah. whole metropolitan. Yeah. But uh, yes, I uh, came over to the United States uh, when I was three and a half years old. And uh, since then, I attended school and everything in the Messiah Valley in the Gadsden District. And uh, so after uh, that, I joined the Navy. I was on, act was on active duty aboard a ship. What, what ship? It was the uh, USS Blakely. At the time, they used to call it a destroyer escort. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, when I was there in the, uh, in the second year that I was there, they renamed them fast frigates, so they could, uh, I guess, keep it up with the rest of the navies around the world. So it became a fast frigate. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew it as a destroyer escort. Anyway, our job was to uh, escort uh, any aircraft carrier that was attached to our force uh, there in the Mediterranean countries. So I never did get to do a uh, Mediterranean cruise, but I got close enough. I did get to go to the uh, uh, Caribbean islands. Yeah, which, which ones? There have been islands. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, there were like maybe seven or eight of them that I got to see, and they, oh, were, they were all nice. All nice. We uh, spend most of our time in uh, Cuba in uh, Guantanamo Bay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where uh, you do a shakedown cruise. You prepare the ship to uh, have it go to the Mediterranean countries for a Met cruise for six more months. So that's what we were doing. We had overhauled it when, uh, when I got there. It got overhauled for maybe a year and a half, and after that, uh, we did that shakedown cruise in Cuba, and uh, I, I ended up getting up at the time. My time had come up. So I went to New Mexico State University there at Las Cruces, mm -hmm. and I studied uh, water utilities. Came over here and then did a job with the city. Uh, I was the uh, lab technician uh, for 15 years. Before I transferred over to Public Works, at Public Works, I became the superintendent for solid waste. That's how you and I met, and that's how uh, Guy and, uh, and I met. Uh, Wait a minute. Solid waste. Solid waste? That's me. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that's my, that's right, solid waste. That's where we, <laughs> that's where we met. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Yes, yes. And, and in various organizations that we belong to, the Beautification Committee yes. and a few other things that we did together. But now you were in the Navy the whole time you... No, no, I'm sorry. I was, uh, I was in the Naval Reserves. Naval Reserves. I did do 22 years of the Naval Reserves. Mm -hmm. uh, I was attached to various units around the world. The first unit that I, uh, that I uh, was attached to after... See, I got up for seven years and then came back in. When I joined again, it was when, I, uh, when the Reserve Center here existed up on the hill by the high school. That's where I joined. Oh, that's, that's right. That's, that's right. right. I was up there yes. seven years. Right. And of course, it was, uh, it was open only for three years. And in 1990, they shut down and they Shit. told us that if we want to continue, we'd have to go to El Paso, uh, Lubbock, or uh, Albuquerque. Yes. I chose El Paso, being that I'm close to home. Yeah. Well, that's where I would have gone, but I decided I didn't have any money to get over there, so I decided <laughs> I'd just get out. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you stayed in? I stayed in for 20 years in the reserves, okay. plus a two years active, so it's a total of 22 years. Now, I don't collect anything yet until I'm 60 years old. That's the difference between being on active duty and being a reservist. Yeah, but you're so young. Gosh, you've got to wait a long time yet. <laughs> quite, quite a bit, quite a oh few years. Oh my gosh, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, 
what did you do now uh, as the, well, by the way, uh, your parents, did they, they move to what, El Paso? No, they left uh, around Las Cruces. Uh, my mom did move, of course. Now my father living with me. But uh, when my dad passed away, uh, we, she left uh, Stomo Farms. I was already living here. Mm -hmm. So after a few years uh, for her living, uh, as a matter of fact, in Juarez, uh, we decided, we said, hey, you know, we need to bring you back. And so she's with me. She's been with me for maybe 10, 10 years or 11 oh, years or so. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now what I do now, Bob, is uh, I'm still involved with the military, but this is a different organization and that's the employer support of the Guard and Reserve. Yeah, let's talk about that for a moment, uh, the employees, employers. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me that I got into that a, a couple of years ago. And uh, through your help, I ended up in uh, Clovis <laughs> at an air base. At a, a boss lift. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. And we were ready to go out and fly helicopters. Uh -huh. uh, but they took one look at me and they decided they would ground all the helicopters <laughs> that day. Is that, that's correct. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's what I heard. <laughs> no, that's right. I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah. But uh, how did you get involved in that program? That, that's a very I, fascinating program. You know, when I was a still a reservist in El Paso, uh, my then uh, friend and uh, Retired Captain Joe Reese, Joseph Reese. Yes, I remember. Uh, he passed away a few years ago, yes. but uh, he was uh, a captain in the reserves mm -hmm. there in El Paso. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was trying to make up his time so that he could retire with the points. A, a lot of people do that. And so uh, he ended up getting me involved with this organization. I think he got me started in 97, mm -hmm. 98. I keep saying that, but the records show that, the records in Albuquerque show that I've been in in this organization for since 2003 but we've actually been serving longer than that oh yeah so officially it's eight years but it's probably closer to 13 years yes yes yeah and so um, this in this organization that I'm in uh, I'm the chairman for mm -hmm. Carlsbad and also for the Eddy County which includes Aptisia. Uh some of the other counties have their own uh, organizations not all the counties, but some of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, all of New Mexico gets served. Who, uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, Las Cruces uh, chair, they oversee everything from Alamogordo, no, maybe even as Ridoso, all the way to Lordsburg. So they have a lot of coverage. Oh my god! And gosh. here we are with just ourselves in Artesia. And no. the employers contribute quite a bit to this program, don't they? Well, uh, monetarily no, but you know what they really, really help us with is in understanding the law. There's a law called USERA that protects the soldiers, mm -hmm. uh, reservists. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, USERA law came into existence, I believe, in 1994. And uh, what it stands for, it's the Uniformed Services uh, Enlist Employment Reemployment Act, Rights mm -hmm. Act. Mm -hmm. It's a long word. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what, what it is, it's a federal law that uh, protects uh, the reservists or the guardsmen, not the active people, but uh, the, the reservists or the guardsmen are, are protected on a daily basis here. I mean, we hope that they don't uh, run into any problems with their employer, but if there's any questions, that's what we're for. We're pretty much like liaisons between uh, the employer and uh, the guardsmen or the reservist. Oh, that's wonderful. If there's any problems that uh, may arise, we ask that, you know, maybe they contact us for clarification. I do have some brochures and stuff at home, and we do, uh, we do have events where we invite employers, such as yourself, mm -hmm. when you got to go to uh, Canon Air Force Base, right. to get the bigger picture, to see what the uh, guardsmen or the reservists are doing out there. Um, not all of them have, not all branches have uh, been involved but I'm glad the Navy has a Coast Guard. Uh, you know, there aren't very many Coast uh, Guardsmen here in New Mexico. No, and if they do, they don't, I, I don't know if they drill. I think they drill maybe in San Diego, maybe Could be. somewhere in Texas by the coast. But uh, we're here to try to, you know, help out with any problems that might arise between the employer and the Guardsmen and the Reserves. Well, I was so impressed when I went up there. I'm, I'm we had that banquet that evening, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh. and uh, it, it just made you feel good. As an ex-serviceman, I felt like, hey, I'm still part of this. Yes, yes. Even though I've been out many, 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 many years, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, you know, I, I was in 
back in 1946-47 in the Army of Occupation in Japan, and I felt, I feel like I'm one of these guys yet. <laughs> they didn't forget us. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that's the nice thing about this whole program. We've, we've got actually members that, uh, that you might have seen or met up there at the uh, bus lift. Uh, that were in World War II. Yes. I, I know a real fine gentleman from uh, Roswell that I haven't seen for maybe a couple of years now, uh, Joe Cannon. He always showed up for those, uh, for those events. Yeah. He was always a nice person to talk to. Now, there aren't many military people that like to talk about their experiences, no, but Joe Cannon did. Yeah. Well, uh, before we take our break, mm -hmm. I want to ask you one question. What do you do in your spare time? Do you have a hobby or anything to relax? <laughs> I take care of some grandkids. Uh, I retired from the city uh, in uh, 2005, mm -hmm. and so what I do now is I, uh, I just take care of them while my, uh, my uh, sons and daughters work, and I mean daughter, uh, work, and so uh, that's what I do. That's what I do. I, I take uh, care of my mom, and I take care of uh, maybe a few grandkids. But uh, as soon as they go to school, who knows, I might be more involved within the community. Yeah, but you're always involved. You're so busy, but you don't have any hobbies just to relax? No, actually, just music. Music? Uh, I, I, yo, I love music. I love music, okay. especially the classic rock. But uh, they're really, you know, I, I do this, uh, and it keeps me busy. I have to be going through emails or anything that goes, that comes uh, to me from either Albuquerque or from National, from yeah. Washington, D.C., so... Well, Tony, uh, I know we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back, because I understand you brought in a member of our military. Yes, Sergeant Hernandez. Uh, he takes care of the uh, local armory here. Okay. Charles, but. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we shall return in a moment, and uh, don't go away. a guest to our uh, encounter here. That's a good word. <laughs> Anthony Hernandez. Sergeant Anthony Hernandez. An oh. Welcome to the show, Thank Anthony. You. Before we talk a little bit uh, about you, uh, uh, Tony, you brought up something just before we uh, end. Yes. I'm hoping that uh, if uh, any reservists from the other branches of the military, such as the Navy, the Coast Guard, the Air Force, the Marines, could actually try to contact me mm -hmm. uh, at home or uh, my good friend who's uh, my latest member, uh, Sergeant Hernandez from the armory, the local armory, and maybe let us uh, have their uh, information such as a name, uh, who they work for, who their boss is, so that in the future we can invite them to a luncheon or a bus lift. But uh, we'd like to get them involved as well. Okay, that sounds so good. So please call. Anthony, uh, I understand that uh, you're related to a friend of mine, is that correct? His name is Henry Munoz, is that correct? Yes, he's Munoz. Yeah, Henry and I, I raised Henry from a little, <laughs> a little type years ago. Yeah, we got invited, involved in the uh, boxing program at the Boys Club years and years ago. And uh, your uncle was one of the finest boxers in the state of New Mexico. Uh, yes, he was. He showed me pictures and, uh, you know, uh, news clips when he was uh, fighting back, in, back then. And uh, you know, I couldn't believe we had a uh, boxing at the boys' club, you know, uh, for so long, and you just don't see that nowadays. No, no, you don't. Anyway, tell me something about Anthony Hernandez. Uh, where did you grow up? Uh, tell me about your mom and dad, or your oh, family. Um, I grew up here in Carlsbad, uh, pretty much my whole life. Uh, my mom, my mom's raising me from here. My dad's from Midland, mm -hmm. Odessa area. Yeah. And uh, he moved down here when he was a young boy. With his family. My mom, she's been here with my grandfather, uh, Henry, and, and uh, uh, her family here. Uh, shoot, um, I've been here pretty much my whole life. Uh, went to the Marines for four years when I was uh, about 20. Mm -hmm. I got out, came back to Carlsbad, and uh, I missed the military, so I joined the National Guard. And uh, you know, uh, luckily, thank God, uh, I was able to get a full-time position uh, here in the Guard. And I've uh, been here since 2004 already. So seven, seven years you've been involved in this. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, how did you uh, run into 
Tony here? Uh, Tony, uh, he came by the Armory one day and introduced himself and, uh, you know, said, hey, would you like to be part of this GR? This is what we do. And, uh, you know, and I was like, yeah, I know it's a good, it's a good thing they do for not only the Guard members, but also the employees, you know. Uh, you know, both sides, we're for pretty much both sides to uh, give them the information they need to, uh, to buffer out whatever problems they might have in the future. Right. So, you know, like if a guard member, uh, you know, can't get off for a drill, you know, his boss, you know, for some reason, you know, he don't know, well, you know, he's supposed to be off for that drill, you know, we go talk to the boss and know, hey, you know, this is the law, you're supposed to let the guard member, uh, you know, be off at this time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's under mandate under law, so, you know, and he's all right, you know, and, you know, most of the time, they're, they're, they once they find that out, they, uh, they're pretty, uh, you know, they work with us, and work with the soldier to uh, make it happen. So. Now, are you full-time in the Guard? Yes, yes you, I am. You know, so you basically, how many people do you have in the Guard right now? Uh, it just depends, it varies right now, it's just, uh, I can't even get you a good number, but um, yeah, it's been 20, between 20 and uh, they, they do have quite a few people from off, from outside the city uh, in his list. He's got people from Las Cruces. Uh, I, I don't know about Santa Fe, but uh, from Lubbock and Midland. Yeah, it's so, all, they're all spread out throughout the whole uh, state, even uh, parts of the other states too. We, uh, right now we, uh, we have some people from Albuquerque, Hobbs, Roswell. Just, they all come together during the month and drill in Carlsbad. And, and it's a good time because you know, we all get along. And, uh, you know, we work hard and then, uh, you know, just uh, compute our mission. And, uh, right now, we're heavy equipment operators. We uh, pretty much move the dirt, build roads, or uh, anything of that nature to, to help out the city or, or the county. Well, that's what you do now. Mm -hmm. It's probably good that I transferred the Navy because I don't even know how to shovel some dirt. That's my problem. And all, but we also have mechanics, too, with heavy lights. So, you know, if the vehicles do, do go down, we have uh, some, So we have some good mechanics to back us up. So to get our equipment back up and running. But um, it's, it's changed a lot. Um, I know when I first got in the guard, it was um, Avenger. Air defense. Air defense. That's what we did. Uh, Washington DC, right? Most of the support guys, people shot. Yeah, local. Now, air defense and then uh, after that, we uh, we got rid of the air defense. Uh, they're supposed to be uh, motor transportation, and then uh, for some reason, we did uh, we that for a few months, and they said, hey, you know, we're going to be heavy equipment operators. So uh, you know, it, it turned out good, and uh, we, we like and enjoy it. Uh, we just came back from Afghanistan. I was going to say that was in the and uh, you know, we had a, a good time up there. We learned a lot. You know, uh, thank God no one uh, died while we were up there. You know, we had a soldier get injured, but uh, thank the Lord he's still okay, and uh, you now he's uh, doing good. What was your impression of uh, the area where you served in Afghanistan? It was similar to New Mexico, I think. Uh, you know, the, the mountains and the desert. It, was, it kind of felt like home a little bit, uh, you know, just the culture was different, totally different. And, uh, the way they lived, it was like, wow. You know, it, it, it was a third world country, you could tell, but, uh, you know, hopefully uh, through our guidance and help, you know, uh, they'll, they'll uh, get on their feet again. Seems like they're doing it now, so. Were you in the southern part of your condo or uh, Afghanistan? Uh, I said, I really, uh, oh, well, we can't discuss that. Uh, I can't say No, we won't discuss it. It was just uh, uh, under, undercover work. <laughs> Yeah, but it was, it was a good time. I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. And uh, the other soldiers, they didn't want to be learned a lot. And, uh, I'm imagine they're happy to come back to the base. Yes, uh, that's an experience that uh, most people don't have any feeling. That they have no knowledge of. No. Yeah, so once you go there and you experience it for yourself, it's just different. When you come back and uh, it just uh, changes you. So you're, you're now a sergeant. It's all happened yeah, for many years. Uh, you know, I hope to get uh, promoted again soon, hopefully in a couple more years. And uh, the only thing is, I won't be able to stay here in Carlsbad. I have to move on to either somewhere up north, but Roswell, Santa Fe. Where do you get a promotion? Please. And then uh, put one of the other guys down here can take the rain and, and uh, do good and better, do a better thing. <laughs> well, would it help if I wrote to my senator and recommended you for a promotion? Does that uh, help? Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> no, no, actually, <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> no, that's all right. Thank you. But there's, you know, it's just uh, there's a process you got to go through, and uh, um, no slots available and all that stuff. So, but uh, you know, I'll be praying for it. Uh, what happened in a couple of years? And, uh, just keep my hopes up. Yeah. Tony, does that bring back memories? Memories from the Navy side, yes. From the Navy side, yes. Uh, we used to have an excellent uh, reserve center here. 
and of uh, course when they shut down, everybody had to move, including the, uh, the person that used to run it, which was uh, you know, you must be Jay Clinton. Yes. And yes, you know, we all had to move uh, one place or the other. But we used to have a good time out here. We, it was a wonderful yeah. experience. Yeah. We had about 50 members up. Oh yes, yeah, every, place. every one of our rooms were filled. Mm -hmm. Every one different one. classes. Yes. And they ended, I ended up in the, what do you call it? it taking care of the notes and all that stuff. And I was one of the slowest typists in, in the Navy Reserve. Were you? Yeah, yeah. typewriters. <laughs> yeah, remember those things called typewriters? We don't have any typewriters anymore. No, no, now, you know, have long time. Now, now you deal with uh, oh, it's computers and computers. Yeah, it's very cool. And I bet you're a good computer. No, I'm not the best, but I try. <laughs> well, they, they looked at me and they said that there's no hope for you. <laughs> so anyway, uh, are you married? Sorry. Yes, I am. I'm happily married. Happily married for three years uh, right now. Uh, we just uh, had our anniversary, our third, three-year anniversary on the 20th of uh, last month, September. Yeah, she's a great woman. I was lucky uh, to find her. Uh, it was one of those things where it just uh, doesn't have to be, and thank glory every day. And her name is Tisa, actually. Yeah, she, she works here at Dr. Medley's, and uh, she's a great person. Oh, that's wonderful. Great wife, great mother. Uh, he just had a son too, so. Uh, oh, well, what? Well, and Jacob. His name is Jacob. 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 He's about eight months now. You, you yeah, could, you could have named him uh, Tony or. or uh, <laughs> uh, 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 no. Oh, my. Uh, well, that's what the wife wanted, so you know, oh, I gotta yeah. follow her rules. You never <laughs> argue Never argue with your wife. You're the king of the house until the wife comes home. That's <laughs> right, that's right. It <laughs> was a fortunate for my friend here that uh, he had gotten married and he, you had to leave your wife for. A year to, uh, to go active duty. So it's, it's, it's a lot that uh, a spouse goes through. Well, people don't realize how tough it is on the wives mm -hmm. when the men are overseas, or vice versa when the wives are overseas and the men have to stay yes. there. Yes. It's a tough, it's it's tough situation. It is. They, have, they gotta deal with all the bills, and the children, take care of the children, all the other little things that go with it. It's a, it's a big job for them to do, you know. You know, we're usually there to help out. I know that. I'm lucky I, uh, I had the kid when I got back and I had my son when I got back. But, you know, for the other guard members, you know, it was tough for them. And, yeah. So I got to hand it to their wives. You know, they did a great job. And, uh, took care of what needed to be done. So. so I was down there when they caught I remember that. I was there. It, it, yes, bothered, it, it, it bothered me. Yes. It, it bothered me. I, wish I was so happy when they, when they came back. You yeah. said only one injury. Yes, thank you for that. What do, what do you do in your spare time? I asked Tony this, but he doesn't have any spare time. Now, what about you? I can't take care of grandkids. I don't have any yet. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a, have a hobby of any sort? Oh, yes, I have many hobbies. Uh, I like to hunt. Uh, my spare time. Excuse me. Excuse me. We won't mention hunting. I'm a vegetarian, so <laughs> <laughs> skip that part and get on to the rest of it. Oh, start fishing. <laughs> And uh, you know, pretty much uh, being out, being outdoors. Um, you know, I don't like staying much. You know, right now, I know I have my son, so it's you know it's a little tough going out there. But uh, you know, I like to go hunting. And, you know, got a good friend I go hunting with. And, uh, it's great time. My brother, you know, most of the But uh, that I read books, uh, magazines. I'm a comic collector, so. Uh, oh, you do. You could collect comics too. Yeah, so I'm proud of that. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. But uh, you know, I, it's little things like that, you know, that uh, you know, try to have my spare time now. It just you know, before I had a, the, my son, you know, I could do whatever. But now I try to focus more time on him. And, and uh, right now he's learning how to crawl and, and walk, so I can teach him. You know, spend Are time with him. Doing that. Tony, he'll be in the military himself. Oh, oh, yes. oh yes, yes, you know, I, I uh, you know, I'll support him whatever he does. Uh, you know, and uh, I know our wife will. My wife will. Uh, so do do one thing though. Do not let him touch the comic books because some of them are very valuable. Oh yes, yes. I'll have a couple of comic books that are, you know maybe I'll have like a, just a you know just an old one or a, a one that have a copy of anything. I got I have Green Hornet number one. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. The only problem is I forgot where I put it. Oh. <laughs> I, oh, it it's really <laughs> strange. <laughs> well, what's the future for our employers? Well, uh, I don't know what the future holds, but uh, I definitely want to give them all the thanks in the world uh, for supporting heroes such as my friend that uh, have to take off and, you know, uh, 
be to make us for our laws to sleep well at night. But uh, employers, as far as here in this city county is concerned, I haven't really had very many problems. Uh, we've been blessed. When I uh, get together with uh, the other chairmen from uh, New Mexico, well, you get to find out you know, whether they're going to be problems. And Las Cruces is one example. Uh, they're very active because there's a lot of activation going on over there. There's units coming in and units being deployed. So uh, they're off the busy. For this being their next door. Mm -hmm. they're, I mean, they're, they're probably the busiest, if not public or media, Las Cruces. Often they day in and day out with uh, problems that arise or anything like that. So they're problems that we're not even aware of. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Um, their ombudsman, the state ombudsman is not located in Las Cruces. Uh, the other one uh, moved to a classroom from Hubbard, okay? so uh, this one friend of mine uh, took the reins on that. And he gets busy. He's a very nice person to work with. Uh, he gets off the busy, but. Uh, you know, for them, and there are military presence there, such as Holloman, uh, Whitesons, Missile Range, or Bliss next door. Uh, they see a lot of uh, people going in and out. And so, uh, you know, I hope that when I say something, you get to train with them. Up. Even just being around them, you get to see what, what all they do. You see what is the problem. He's been out of the military and still, it's, it's got it's got a hold of it. It, it, it does. Yeah. It does, you know, you can tell the retired uh, vets, and my grandfather, for example, he gets up still at 4.35 in the morning every day, you know, uh, just on his own, you know, and just used to it. It's one of the things that really need. Well, I want to thank both of you for being our guest. It's oh, yeah, a real pleasure, and I want you to say hello to, we won't, we won't mention his name again, <laughs> because I raised him from a pup, you know. Oh, it's only it's, it's a pleasure. 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 Anthony, same here. Thank you, Bob. And, uh, on behalf of Channel 23, goodbye and good luck. <laughs>